Welcome to the Center for Fintech and Banking Universitas 11 Maret. Established in 2020, the Center for Fintech and Banking, UNS Fintech Center, is one of the center of excellences in Universitas 11 Maret. To be the center for training and education, capacity of building in financial technology and banking, Center for Research in Financial Technology and Banking and to be an innovation hub for technological-based financial innovation. UNS Fintech Center is supported by reputable researchers in financial technology and banking with extensive experiences in education, research, scientific publication, and community engagement becoming the core excellence in our programs. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, all of our events are conducted virtually through Zoom cloud meetings or YouTube live streaming. In 2020 alone, UNS Fintech Center has successfully organized many events such as International Seminar Fintech and the Future of Finance, International Webinar Global Economy and Financial Factor Post COVID-19, International Webinar Financial Crime, Fraud and Cyber Security, Online Workshop on Publishing Research Papers in Finance Journals, Online Workshop Recent Topics for Research in Finance, World Class Professor Program. UNS Fintech Center also organized the first virtual summer course program in financial technology and banking on 10 up to 14 August 2020. Inviting 16 instructors from 14 institutions with total 518 participants from 14 countries. Nurturing the creative digital business environment, UNS Fintech Center held a competition in digital innovation. All these achievements are supported by our partners. Supporting high-quality research in finance and banking. UNS Fintech Center provides a free access to the ACON data stream for the UNS academic members. This access is part of the research grants program under the Erasmus Plus Capacity Building in Higher Education Project. Optimizing research and doctoral programs in banking and finance in Indonesian universities. To be a well-established center for excellence, UNS Fintech Center will return with a great global competition in digital innovation, the IC 2021, and establish further partnership and collaboration with external institutions. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua Om Swastiastu Namo Buddhaya Salam Kebajikan Selamat ulang tahun yang pertama Untuk Pusat Unggulan IPTEC Atau PUIPT Center for Fintech and Banking UNS Saya merasa bangga atas prestasi yang telah dicapai PUI ini Termasuk menjadi PUIPT Dengan kinerja terbaik pada tahun 2020 dan masuk dalam klaster 1 di tingkat nasional di antara PUIPT yang lain. Semoga ke depan berbagai hasil riset, karya inovasi, rekomendasi, kebijakan, program edukasi, dan implementasi komersial akan semakin banyak dikontribusikan oleh Center for Fintech and Banking UNS. PUIPT Center for Fintech and Banking UNS Educate, innovate, collaborate, and disseminate. Ilmu pengetahuan tanpa keluhuran budi adalah buta. Inti lambang Universitas 11 Maret divisualisasikan oleh sebuah wiku. Sosok orang pintar dengan praba di pusat wajahnya. Dalam sejarah agama dan pewayangan, praba digunakan oleh orang suci dan bijaksana. Mengisyaratkan keluhuran budi dengan pancaran sinar keabadian ilmu pengetahuan yang menerangi 
untuk kesejahteraan manusia. Universitas 11 Maret berdiri pada tanggal 11 Maret 1976. Telah memposisikan diri menjadi salah satu universitas terkemuka di Indonesia. Memiliki cita-cita luhur untuk membangun negeri dengan terus mencetak prestasi dan inovasi yang bermanfaat bagi masyarakat. Universitas 11 Maret telah membangun visi dan rencana strategisnya untuk menjadi pusat pengembang ilmu pengetahuan, teknologi, dan seni yang unggul secara internasional berlandaskan nilai-nilai luhur budaya bangsa. Berfokus pada peningkatan bidang khusus dan pada pengembangan kapasitas untuk memenuhi standar kelas dunia, UNS mengembangkan tiga pusat unggulan IPTEC. Ketiga pusat unggulan IPTEC tersebut adalah pusat unggulan dalam teknologi baterai lithium ion, fintech center dalam bidang teknologi keuangan, dan javanologi yang berfokus pada studi, pengembangan, dan pelestarian budaya Jawa. Universitas 11 Maret terletak di kota Surakarta atau lebih dikenal dengan Solo. Sebuah kota yang sangat nyaman untuk ditinggali di mana budaya Jawa dan kehidupan modern berpadu. Kehidupan kota Solo yang menjunjung tinggi harmoni telah membentuk lulusannya sebagai calon pemimpin masa depan yang berkarakter tangguh, kreatif, ramah dan murah hati, tenang, juga lentur adaptif. Untuk mewujudkan visi pendidikan tinggi Indonesia, Kampus Merdeka, Merdeka Belajar, Universitas 11 Maret memiliki berbagai program yang tersebar ke dalam 11 fakultas, sekolah vokasi, dan pasca sarjana. Berbagai layanan perpustakaan seperti penyediaan ribuan buku, akses ke berbagai jurnal internasional, dan pendampingan klinik pustaka dikembangkan dalam rangka mendukung pembelajaran mahasiswa, dosen, dan peneliti. Dengan suasana akademik yang nyaman, kampus yang hijau, serta didukung sistem informasi yang terintegrasi, Universitas 11 Maret menumbuhkan budaya akademik yang berperspektif global dan berorientasi 4.0. Kemitraan aktif dan kolaborasi yang kuat telah menjadi bagian tak terpisahkan dari universitas. Kemitraan internasional menciptakan banyak peluang untuk mobilitas mahasiswa dan staf, kolaborasi penelitian, dan pengabdian masyarakat. Selain menjadi pusat kepakaran, UNS juga menjadi rumah bagi mahasiswa dari 34 provinsi di Indonesia dan 33 negara di dunia. Menciptakan lingkungan beragam yang mengarah pada kekayaan budaya untuk dapat saling memahami. Ekspresi keberagaman menjadi hal yang dihargai setiap hari. Di dalam area kampus, UNS memiliki enam tempat ibadah untuk enam agama dan kepercayaan yang diakui pemerintah Indonesia. Hal ini menempatkan UNS sebagai satu-satunya universitas di Indonesia yang memiliki enam tempat ibadah di satu wilayah. Inilah bukti bahwa UNS telah menjadi tempat yang aman bagi berbagai latar belakang dan inklusif untuk belajar bagi mahasiswa penyandang disabilitas. Kehidupan modern saat ini begitu kompleks daripada sebelumnya. Kita hidup dalam dunia yang berubah begitu cepat, sulit diprediksi, dan penuh ketidakpastian. 
Universitas berperan besar dalam menyiapkan lulusannya untuk pekerjaan yang belum dibuat, teknologi yang belum ditemukan, dan untuk mengatasi masalah yang belum diantisipasi sebelumnya. Penting untuk dipahami bahwa menjadi fleksibel adalah inti dari pertumbuhan seiring dengan perubahan abad ke-21. Inilah yang mendorong UNS mengubah tata kelolanya menjadi PT NBH. Dengan perubahan status ini, UNS akan memiliki ruang gerak yang optimal dalam meningkatkan kualitasnya, memiliki otonomi dan kemandirian untuk mengimplementasikan kebijakan lima pilar akselerasi UNS menuju World Class University. Universitas 11 Maret, bercita-cita luhur membangun negara. Good afternoon and good evening. Also, welcome to UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. This event organized by the Center for Fintech and Banking, Universitas 11 Maret, supported by Indonesia Financial Services Authority, OJK, Central Bank of Indonesia, BI, and Indonesia Deposit Insurance Corporation, LPS. I am Elizabeth Sudira, the Master of Ceremony of today's event. A warm welcome to His Excellency, Professor Wimbo Santoso, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners Indonesia Financial Services Authority, OJK. We also have distinguished Mr. Ruli Nurianto, Senior Advisor to the Minister of Cooperative, Small and Medium Enterprises of Republic of Indonesia. Distinguished Professor Jamal Wiwoho, Director of Universitas 11 Maret. Also, Professor David Lee Kuo Chuet, President Global Fintech Institute, and Distinguished Vice Rector, Dean, and Lecturer, Universitas 11 Maret. Not just us here on site at UNS, but also we have our participants who are joining us virtually through Zoom Cloud Meetings Room, and also who have joined us in the official YouTube channel of UNS Fintech Center and official YouTube channel Universitas 11 Maret. Once again, welcome to this amazing event. We will also have another agenda after the plenary session. First is MOU signing between UNS and Global Fintech Institute. And next is talk show with speakers, Mr. Paul Sulte, founder of Sulte Research, also Danar Jaya Harinta Sri, VP Operation and Technology APL and members of Zueling Pharma Group ICIO community. Also Dr. Taufik Arifin, researcher UNS FinTech Center. And last but not least, awarding of UNS Digital Innovation Challenge 2021. And we have a special performance from 
Hola Rosa. So please stay tuned until the end of the event because we also have surprise event for the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, because we start the main event, we will listen to the Indonesia National Anthem, Indonesia Raya. For all participants, please turn on your camera. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me now to start the event with the opening remarks from the Rector of Universitas 11 Maret, the distinguished Professor Jamal Yoho, the time is yours. Yang kami hormati dan kami banggakan, Bapak Teten Mas Duki, Menteri Koperasi Usaha Kecil Menengah Republik Indonesia. Yang kami hormati dan kami banggakan, Bapak Profesor Wimbo Santoso, Ketua Dewan Komisioner Otoritas Jasa Keuangan. Respectable, Profesor David Lee, President of Global Fintech Institute, all the speaker, Dr. Pei Shan Fan, Mr. Paul Solta, Mr. Danarjaya Harinta Sri, and Dr. Taufik Arifin, and all participants of the Universitas 11 Maret UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. First of all, on behalf of Universitas Blas Marat UNS, it is great pleasure to welcome you to the Universitas Digital Innovation Festival 2021. I would also like to thank the participant for you enthusiasm to participate in this event. The participants are not only coming from our university, but also from other institutional in Indonesia and outside Indonesia. This event is organized by Center for Fintech and Banking, Universitas 11 Maret, as a part of the UNS 45, an anniversary celebration. We also thank Otoritas Jasa Keuangan, 
Bank Indonesia and Lembaga Penjaminan Simpanan for supporting this event. It is today's festival. We have several agenda including the signing memorandum of understanding between UNS and the Global Fintech Institute, the awarding of the UNS Digital Challenge 2021, talk show and digital transformation, and the future of society and entertainment. We are also lucky today to listen to the speaker of Bapak Teten Masduki and Bapak Professor Wimba Santoso. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, technological advance has led to more innovation all aspect in our life. Therefore, the landscape of most industry and has challenged over the last very a few years. We are fully aware the that university should be the pioneer and guiding the society in this transformation. Therefore, over the last couple of years, our university has made several initiation in education, research, innovation, and community service to deal with the digital transformation and innovation. For instance, in the celebration with the OJK, we established the Center for FinTech and Banking, UNS, to tuition and 20. The center was placed number one center of excellence in Indonesia University according to the performance assessment of the Directorate of Higher Education, Ministry of Education and Culture in the end of 20 and 2020. In general, our university has committed to contribute in the sustainable development, not only at the national level, but also in the regional and international environment, as we are fully aware that in today's globalized world, contribution of universities should be promoted to a wider spectrum. Finally, let me reiterate that we strongly expect that this festival will be beneficial for you all and again. We thank you very much for participating in this event. Good evening. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor Jamal Wiwoho. Next, I would like to invite to deliver his remarks, President Global Fintech Institute, Professor David Lee Kuo Chuen, followed by the Memorandum of Understanding Signing between Universitas 11 Maret and Global Fintech Institute. of Indonesia Financial Services Authority, Mr. Tetan Masdugi, Minister of Cooperatives, Small and Medium Enterprises of the Republic of Indonesia, Professor Jamal Bivoho, Rector of Universitas, Sabalas Marat, Professor Eran Trigoho, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, and it is a great pleasure an honor to be here today. First, on behalf of the Global FinTech Institute, I want to thank our VIPs for gracing this extraordinary occasion today. Special thanks to Professor Jamal Bihoho for strongly supporting this initiative 
between UNS and Global FinTech Institute. And my congratulations to you for hosting this prestigious and very grand UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. Appreciation also to Professor Iran and his team to arrange this great event. Indonesia has been one of the most successful nations in financial inclusion globally. And now it is embarking on inclusion in communication and also digital infrastructure. With a population of 280 million, it is a significant and leading market for inclusive fintech. GFI's mission is to work as closely with education institutions in as many countries as possible. Therefore, it is essential for GFI to work closely with higher learning institutions like UNS, which is the leading university in Indonesia. UNS FinTech Center is also the top FinTech Center in the country. Therefore, today we are signing a vital MOU to mark the beginning of a great partnership with this very respectable institution. The purpose of this MOU is to outline the intention of the parties to cooperate in promoting the fintech sector and raising the level of professionalism of the industry in Indonesia via jointly design, designing and conducting executive development programs and training courses for the industry and academics in Indonesia. Both UNS and GFI acknowledge the significant potential of collaborating with each other for mutual benefit. In this regard, GFI looks forward to fostering a strong relationship with the Center for FinTech and Banking, uh, UNS FinTech Center, and including um, as well uh, in the ASEAN landscape as part of GFI coordinated effort in promoting the cooperation and knowledge sharing among international financial technology organizations, promoting best practices and jointly formulating financial technology development standards and governance guidelines in the region. Finally, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Paul Shoti, a global thought leader, to be here tonight to share his great insight. Paul runs a world-leading research outfit from Singapore, and I'm, oh, I'm so glad that he can be here tonight. Indonesia will be the leading market for inclusive fintech and will continue accelerating its growth with new digital infrastructure. For any startups and anyone involved, a market not to be missed. Our cooperation with UNS FinTech Center is just the beginning for innovation and FinTech. And I do not doubt that we'll be, we will be doing more together for Indonesia and connecting with the rest of ASEAN. With that, I hope all of you will enjoy the evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor David Lee. And now we are going to MOU signing Professor David Lee Kuo Chuan from Global FinTech Institute and Professor Jamal Wiwoho from Universitas Sebelas Maret. And for your information that Professor David Lee is now joining virtually from Singapore. So Professor Jamal and also Professor David, the platform is yours. Please to sign the document of MOU. The scope of this MOU are focused on education and training, FinTech certification, and research collaboration. Hopefully through this MOU, more people and students would get more access on FinTech certification. And please to show the document to the camera. And hold on because we're gonna take a picture of 
this very beautiful moment. Thank you, Professor Jamal and also Professor David Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, you're still on UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. The first keynote speech is from Minister of Cooperative Small and Medium Enterprises of Republic of Indonesia that will be delivered by Mr. Ruli Nurianto, Senior Advisor to the Minister of Cooperative Small and Medium Enterprises of the Republic of Indonesia. Good evening, Bapa. May peace upon you, Bapa Ruli. Please send our gratitude to Bapa Teten Mas Duki. Pak Ruli Nurianto, the time is yours. Bapa, would you please to unmute your microphone because we cannot hear your voice. Sorry. Please to take off the headset because, yeah, because we only can hear your voice without headset, Bapa. Sorry for this inconvenience. Yes, by you, Paruli. We cannot hear your voice. Our team to uh, also try to find the souls. Yeah, we're still waving to Mr. Ruli Nurianto. Paroli, can you repeat again, once again, and we're going to check the audio. Hello, Paroli. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Good evening, Bapak. Hello. Good evening. Sudah terdengar ya? Sudah. We can hear okay. your voice. The time is yours, okay. Bapak. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang terhormat, Bapak Profesor Jamal Wiwoho, Rektor Universitas 11 Maret. Yang terhormat, Profesor David Lee Kuo Chuan, President of Global Fintech Institute. Bapak Profesor Wimbo Santoso, Ketua Dewan Komisaris Otoritas Jasa Keuangan. Para Wakil Rektor, Dekan, dan segenap Sivitas Akademika Universitas 11 Maret, para narasumber, dan para mahasiswa Universitas 11 Maret, serta hadirin sekalian yang berbahagia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat malam, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Please uh, allow me to deliver this speech in Bahasa, ya, Mbak Moderator. Puji syukur kehadirat Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, kita semua masih bisa diberi kesempatan untuk e, bertemu, berdiskusi pada malam malam hari ini. Insya Allah, dalam kondisi well, sehat walafiat lahir batin, walaupun e, sebagian dari kita bertemu secara virtual. Kemudian, e, saya ingin memohonkan e, maaf dari Pak Menteri, Pak Teten Mas Duki, karena 
pada malam ini beliau masih rapat di Bapenas multi lintas kementerian dengan menteri-menteri lain untuk membahas RKP tahun 2022. Salam dari beliau untuk Bapak Ibu semua di sini. Kemudian kami juga ingin mengucapkan selamat ulang tahun tentu kepada Universitas 11 Maret tentu dengan harapan agar Universitas 11 Maret ini akan semakin maju dan berkembang menjadi universitas unggul, terutama dalam kontribusi terhadap pembangunan SDM Indonesia yang berkualitas melalui kompeten, yang berkompetensi dan cinta kepada tanah air. Kemudian juga selamat atas penandatanganan MOU tadi antara Universitas 11 Maret dengan Global Fintech Institute. Dan tentu karena masih dalam suasana Idul Fitri kepada saudara-saudara, Bapak-Ibu sekalian yang merayakan, kami juga mengucapkan selamat Idul Fitri 1442 Hijriah. Minal Aidin wal Faizin, mohon maaf lahir dan batin. Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, tentu kita semua sudah aware dan sudah sering mendengar bahwa UMKM memang memiliki peran penting bagi perekonomian nasional. Karena selain jumlahnya yang mayoritas sebanyak 64,2 juta, Kemudian juga kontribusi terhadap PDB-nya yang sebesar 61,07 persen dan investasi yang sebesar 60,42 persen serta menyerap tenaga kerja yang paling besar yaitu sebesar 97,02 persen dari total angkatan kerja yang ada. Namun kita juga masih menghadapi tantangan yaitu jumlah UMKM yang besar tersebut ternyata belum sejalan dengan rasio kewirausahaan di Indonesia yang relatif masih rendah, yaitu masih di kisaran angka 3,4 persen. Dengan banyaknya jumlah unit usaha di Indonesia, namun dengan tingkat kewirausahaan yang rendah, menunjukkan ada persoalan kualitas kewirausahaannya. Hal ini ditunjukkan dengan produktivitas yang masih relatif rendah, kurang memiliki inovasi, kurang berkisnambungan, sehingga tidak sehingga belum mampu untuk memenangkan pasar persaingan. Kementerian Koperasi dan UKM menargetkan rasio kewirausahaan di Indonesia pada tahun 2021 sebesar 3,55 persen dan 3,94 persen di tahun 2024 melalui penciptaan wirausaha muda atau milenial yang inovatif, berkelanjutan, dan menciptakan lapangan pekerjaan dalam dalam satu ekosistem. Dan UKM digital produktif merupakan salah satu kunci pemulihan ekonomi. Pelaku usaha yang cepat beradaptasi dalam mengikuti perubahan dan membaca permintaan pasar, serta beralih dari konvensional menjadi digital terbukti mampu bertahan di tengah masa pandemi ini. Pada tahun 2020, tercatat terdapat kenaikan nilai transaksi e-commerce sebesar 29,6 persen yaitu dari sekitar 205,5 triliun pada tahun 2019 menjadi 266,3 triliun pada tahun 2020. Namun demikian, Bapak dan Ibu sekalian, baru 18 persen UMKM yang onboarding dalam platform digital dari total populasi UKM yang UMKM yang sebanyak 64,2 juta tadi. Kementerian Koperasi dan UKM dalam pengembangan KUMKM ke depan memiliki enam program strategis yaitu mendorong berkembangnya kooperasi modern, transformasi usaha mikro di sektor informal menjadi formal, mendorong pelaku UKM untuk masuk ke pasar ekspor, dan transformasi digital serta terhubung dengan rantai nilai global, memperkuat penyaluran dana bergulir yang fokus pada penyaluran kooperasi sektor produktif, serta meningkatkan layanan pemasaran produk UMKM melalui SMESCO, dan meningkatkan rasio kewirausahaan seperti tadi yang sudah saya sebutkan. Saat ini kami juga terus konsisten mendorong pelaku UMKM untuk onboarding ke dalam ekosistem digital, seperti melalui pendampingan UMKM dalam meningkatkan komersialisasi dengan program pelatihan online, optimalisasi e-commerce, pasar digital BUMN, serta agar dapat masuk dalam laman UMKM di e-katalog LKPP dan uh, mengembangkan program bela pengadaan. Di sisi lain, pemanfaatan teknologi serta pengembangan dan inovasi proses bisnis juga dilakukan dalam upaya memodernisasi koperasi. Koperasi modern, format kelembagaan usaha yang sangat relevan dengan isu 
Koperasi modern merupakan format kelembagaan usaha yang sangat relevan dengan isu terkini seperti sharing ekonomi, inklusivitas, bahkan sangat tepat untuk format perusahaan perintis berbasis teknologi. Upaya yang, diperlu, ya, upaya yang dilakukan pemerintah, pemerintah tersebut tentu memerlukan sinergi, peran, dan kontribusi para pemangku kepentingan, baik swasta, organisasi masyarakat, dan tentu juga pihak akademisi dan universitas. Untuk itu, Kementerian Koperasi dan UKM sangat mengapresiasi dan menyambut baik rangkaian acara yang telah dilaksanakan pada perayaan Dias Natalis Universitas 11 Maret Solo yang ke-45 ini yang salah satunya dengan menyelenggarakan Digital Innovation Challenge 2021 untuk mahasiswa di seluruh dunia yang memiliki yang memiliki konsep atau ide-ide inovasi digital yang kemudian berpartisipasi dan bersaing untuk menjadi pemenang. Penyelenggaraan kegiatan ini merupakan hal yang luar biasa dan mampu diharapkan mampu meningkatkan kreativitas para mahasiswa ataupun masyarakat umum. Sekali lagi, saya mengucapkan selamat merayakan Dias Natalis ke-45 kepada pimpinan dan seluruh jajaran sivitas akademika Universitas 11 Maret. Saya tentu berharap kerjasama dan kolaborasi yang baik antara pemerintah dan perguruan tinggi serta berbagai pihak dapat semakin menghidupkan semangat, menghidupkan geliat, dan meningkatkan kinerja dan pemberdayaan UMKM di Indonesia, sehingga mampu menjadi penggerak perekonomian nasional. Demikian beberapa hal yang dapat saya sampaikan pada kesempatan ini. Sekali lagi, terima kasih. Salam sehat dan bahagia bagi kita semua. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ruli Nurianto. The next keynote speech is from Professor Wimbo Santoso, Chairman of the Board of Commissioner Indonesia Financial Services Authority (OJK) that will be delivered by Mr. Iman Syah, Deputy Commissioner for Digital Finance Innovation and OJK Institute. Good evening, Bapak Iman Syah. Uh, good evening as well. Thank you. We can hear your audio clearly. So the time is yours, Papa. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for the opportunity for myself to deliver on behalf of the chairman of uh, OJK, uh, Papa Wimbo Santoso. Uh, unfortunately, he is willing to come by himself. Uh, and attend uh, and also deliver the speech by himself. But uh, unfortunately, at this moment, uh, there is a sudden uh, invitation coming from the Minister of Coordination of Economic and Affairs. So, uh, on behalf of uh, he, uh, Dr. Wimbo Santoso, Professor Wimbo Santoso, uh, Chairman of OJK, I would like to uh, uh, deliver his speech on this occasion. Thank you. Uh, I hope my colleagues from the OJK uh, as well has prepared the presentations for at, at least as a compliment for his uh, his speech. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening, and uh, and thank you for uh, the uh, opportunity for OJK to share ideas on the uh, 45th uh, days uh, this Natalis of uh, University of. Sebas Maret uh, 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 in Solo. Well, this team is uh, uh, Bapak Ruli Nuryanto from the Minister of Cooperatives, Small and Medium Enterprises of the Republic Indonesia. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Bapak Jamal Wiboho, uh, Rector of University of Sebas Maret. Uh, Mr. David Lee uh, Kuo Chen, uh, President of Global Pintech Institute. Uh, uh, the esteemed speakers, uh, Mr. Faust Kulte and Dr. Pei uh, uh, Saipan, and esteemed uh, colleagues, uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, I would like to thank University, University of 11 Maret 
for inviting me to this webinar on the occasion of UNS 45th anniversary. I would like also to express my gratitude to the organizers who uh, have organized this conference very excellent way. I'm very, I'm very interested to join uh, all of you in this important event to share OJK perspectives on how to accelerate digital transformation in financial services sector in Indonesia, especially in the time when we have, when our uh, economic graph uh, being engaged and being challenged by the COVID-19. I believe these discussions will provide brilliant ideas, not only to the authorities, but also to anybody who has interest on the subject. On these occasions, I will share about three uh, things. First is the potential and challenge of the digital economy in Indonesia. The second one is uh, strategies and quick wins for the implementations of digital transformation in financial services sector. And the last one will be OJK initiative to accelerate uh, the digital transformations. Distinguished uh, speakers and participants, for the first point on the potentials and challenges of the digital economy in Indonesia, where we all know already that Indonesia has a great potential to support the development of the digital services or the digital industry, which is reflected in first, we in Indonesia has a great number of populations uh, numbering 272 million people spread over almost more than 70,000 islands. And in 2020, 50 million Indonesian people are upper middle class category. Well, this is according to the Statistics Bureau in 2021. The second one is that Indonesia has a potential value of digital transactions. In 2025, the number reached 150 billion US dollar, and it is predicted to become the country which is the number one digital economy in the Southeast, in the Southeast Asia. Then there are 175.4 million users of internet in Indonesia. Uh, in 2030, well, about six years from now, uh, about, about nine years from now, it is predicted that 135 million people will become the main consumers of e-commerce. And we do see the trend of the increasing number of the users of uh, e-commerce are uh, really preferred in Indonesia. Then sectors that have the potential to be digitalized are manufacturing, transportation and housing, retail trade, agriculture and constructions. And finally, we do have the number of startups in Indonesia is more than 2,100 startup with a four unicorns and one decacorn. Then it will be, I think, I believe will be also uh, another uh, startup will become another uh, unicorns or decacorns. Then we do realize that the COVID-19 pandemics is uh, the right momentum to accelerate digital transformations. Uh, I think where technology will become a, a game changer since, uh, since then. And during the pandemic, consumer have moved forward uh, toward online channels and become more digital minded. And I think uh, the number of e-commerce transactions also increasing. The financial services sector must respond to the consumer needs by doing digital transformations. This transformation will provide easy and uh, fast financial services for all people, including expanding financing access for public and micro, small and medium enterprises business in Indonesia. Also, it will increase financial inclusion and literacy for unbanked people. However, there are three main challenges for financial services trans, uh, to transform their businesses. One is 
lack of IT infrastructure and supporting technology, then lack of digital expertise and talent, and also lack of security framework for data privacy and cyber securities. I think this will be become a homework for the government as well as all, uh, all of the stakeholders in Indonesia, how we are addressing the challenges in area of digital transformation, in particular in the financial service sector. Distinguished speakers and participants, to answer those challenges and accelerate digital transformation, OJK has published what we call a digital finance innovation roadmap and action plans starting 2020 up to 2024 with four quick wins. The first quick win is developing responsible innovation in financial service sector. This will include optimizing the OJK regulated sandbox platform to develop innovation and regulatory uh, framework compliance before that digital finance products and services are used on large scale. So it's a, it's a pre process when we are assessing how is the uh, any platform within the digital uh, financial innovation will comply with the standards and in particular how they are mitigate how they manage the risk management and how they have a good governance and in particular how is at the end they are also concerned with the public uh, with the uh, protections to the consumers. At, at this time, uh, in, in according to the OJK regulatory sandbox, we very much ensure as well the digital product and services can provide added value in terms of convenience, uh, comfort, and safety to the public, as I have mentioned before. The second quick wins will be digital transformation that supports financial stability. Well, for years, we do very concerned and how we are safeguarding uh, the uh, financial system stability. So in, in the area, in the era of digital finance, it is, it is a must for us as well to also concern with the financial system stability. For this effort, we will enhance regulations to ensure a level playing field and also minimizing regulatory arbitrage with the, with the implementations of the principal same business same risk and same rules principles. So we do realize it will be 100% perfect, but at least it is a, a platform uh, of the beginning that when we are trying to uh, regulate and control the activity, act, any activities engaged with the digital uh, transactions in the financial sector. Then, uh, comply with the prudential principles and regulation in developing digital finance product and services and ensure financial service institutions have reliable risk management to mitigate any potential risk such as cyber risk and also the risk of technology malfunctions. Uh, I think so we are all aware with the how is we are now uh, being also uh, engaged with the discussions with the leakage of the data coming uh, 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 of uh, people of Indonesia. Question number three will be innovation as the backbone for national economic growth. In this case, then digital finance service institution encourage uh, micro, small and medium enterprises to transform as well into digital micro, small and medium enterprises through financial support and training, mentoring with digital platforms. Uh, in this case, we try to link it between the incumbent industry that have been known already in advance to the technology, and we try to connect them with the medium, with the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Integrating the regional potential economic sector with a digital-based financial ecosystem to expand financial access, and collaborating with relevant ministries to accelerate the development of supporting infrastructure and digital talent. And the last is our quick wins number four, support consumer protections and increasing financial inclusion. In this case, 
we will be encouraging financial services institutions to use technology to increase transparency and consumer protection and expanding financing access for people in remote areas in particular to increase financial inclusions through digital financial innovations. At the end, with the financial inclusions, we do hope that the financial literacy will also be, uh, be, uh, in, uh, be elevated as well. And it will uh, increasing the competencies of our people to understand the services and any services and products coming from the uh, digital uh, financial institutions or also the incumbent industry. This, uh, distinguished speakers and participants, uh, I would like to touch on the OJK initiative to accelerate the uh, digital transformations. Well, as part of the digital transformation, OJK has developed the digital financial services ecosystem that also supervised by OJK. You can see from the uh, slide here that will including that will be including. Uh, 22 banks that now have digital banking services and up, up and 10 of them already have open banking services. They, there are 147 uh, P2P lending platforms and one of, and 10 of them are based on Sharia uh, principles and up to March 20, uh, 2021, the accumulated loan disbursements of this P2P lending has reached 181.67 trillion rupiah. For securities crowdfunding and the, and the funds raised were uh, 196.68 million billion for small and medium enterprises. And finally, we are also now being engaged to develop digital micro walk-up banks in one integrated digital ecosystem. To further support the innovations, OJK initiated already uh, since 2018, a fintech hub called what we call OJK Infinity. This is a venue in, in, in which that the uh, practitioners or the uh, players of the digital finance exchange ideas and innovations in developing the ecosystems in digital financial, in particular in the area of financial services sector. In addition to accelerate licensing and reporting in the digital era, oh, we are currently carrying out a business process reengineering with three main aspects. One is technology based integrating licensing development to create efficiency in licensing. So it will accelerate how we can provide a, a licensing process more fast, uh, becoming faster than before. And it will hopefully will increase uh, efficiency in the financial sector. And then accelerate reporting process through the integration of reporting data collection. So providing data can be easier and faster to support the decision-making process in the financial sector. Uh, any entities will becoming easier and faster to come up with a final decision. And developing digital finance, digital based surveillance application to increase the effectiveness and efficiency for financial services supervision. Where well, for this the, this latter area, uh, we are now on our plan to also to, pre, uh, to start how we develop and how we design the concept of subtech and rectech in OJK. And that will be very much our uh, initiatives, our priority in the, uh, in the coming years. And also to improve the quality of digital-based supervisions, OJK will continue to develop several aspects, including providing training or certification to improve supervisors' capabilities that are relevant to the technological developments, develop integrated data management to conduct real-time surveillance, 
and also we are currently strengthening ourselves and act uh, in in the area of research and development. So I think uh, we we very keen to have a lot of uh, initiatives in 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 research with a uh, number of universities, including as well with the University of Sebelas Maret. Distinguished speakers and participants, before closing these remarks, so again on behalf of the uh, on behalf of the uh, chairman of OJK, uh, Bob, uh, Professor Rimbo Santoso, uh, he would like to conclude the 55th anniversary to Universitas Sebelas Maret, and congratulations as well to the achievements gained by the University of Sebelas Maret. I also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the signing of the MOU between Universitas Sebelas Maret and the Global FinTech Institute. Of the MOU will bring a lot of benefit for uh, parties that uh, involved in the MOU. Hopefully the collaboration will encourage UNS, uh, especially UNS FinTech Center to develop innovation in financial services and produce new promi uh, promising talent that will contribute more in rapidly changing digital uh, landscape. One point that I want to add at, at these occasions, uh, Professor Wimbo Santo also always mentions about that OJK has to uh, enhance and, and be more proactive in collaboration with the uh, university in the area of certification program that will be uh, increase the cap uh, competencies of the uh, any uh, players, all of the uh, uh, all of the uh, human resources in the financial sector, including as well in the context of the financial technology. Uh, finally, I hope today's discussion will be very uh, fruitful and uh, provide uh, huge contributions uh, to support the innovations uh, in Indonesia. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So uh, that's all that I can uh, provide you and share and read to you. Uh, I delivered the speech coming from uh, Chairman of OJK, Professor Mbak Santoso. Hope that will uh, give us a lot of insight and also a, a big uh, uh, leap for the next steps uh, in, in according to the 45th anniversary of University of Sebelas Maret Solo. Thank you very much and I, I turn over to the uh, uh, MC. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you, Mr. Iman Shah on behalf of Mr. Wimbo Santoso. To all speakers and participants, we came to the end of the plenary session of UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021, organized by the Center for FinTech and Banking UNS, supported by Indonesia Financial Services Authority, OJK, Central Bank of Indonesia, BI, and Indonesia Deposit Insurance Corporation, LPS. But this is not the end of the show because my colleague Albert will continue the webinar and also don't miss the awaited performance from the beautiful singer Ola Rosa. <laughs> Setiap menanti kau kembali. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ola Rosa, and I am the alumnus of UNS. And currently, I work as professional national singer in Indonesia. And tonight, I will entertain you with five songs. And I would like to greet the Minister of Cooperative, Small and Medium Enterprises of the Republic of Indonesia, Mr. Tatan Mastuki, the Chairman of the Board of Commissioners of the Indonesia Financial Authority, 
Prof. Wimbo Santoso, Director of WNS Prof. Jamawi Woho, Prof. David Lee from Global Fintech Institute, and Mr. Paul Schulte from Schulte Research, and the last one is Mr. Danar Jaya Harintasri and Dr. Taufik Arifi. Last but not least, for everyone who have joined this event, thank you for having me on this incredible night. You're just too good to be true can take my eyes out of you You've been like heaven to touch Oh, I wanna hold you so much At long last love has arrived And I thank God I'm alive You're just too good to be true can take my eyes out of you A part of the way that I stay there's nothing else to compare The sound of you leaves me Oh, there are no words left to speak But if you feel like I feel Please let me know that's real You're just too good to be true Yeah. 
to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Beautiful voice, Ola Rosa. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to send our gratitude to all speakers and participants who have been willing to attend. And thank you to all participants who have joined us in the Zoom Cloud meetings and DONS FinTech Center and Universitas Sebelas Maret official YouTube channel live stream. For the attention that has been given to us from the beginning until the end of this planner session. Thank you so much. And now, I'm Elizabeth Sudira signing out from this room. And thank you. And also see you on the next session with my friends, Albert Yona. Albert, all time is yours. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants. I hope you enjoy this, and you are still watching UNS, Digital Innovation Festival 2021, organized by the Center of Fintech and Banking, Universitas Sabalas Maret, supported by Indonesia Financial Services Authority, OJK, Central Bank of Indonesia, BI, and Indonesia Deposit Insurance Corporation, IDIC. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are moving to the talk show session, and I'm Albert. I'm going to be the moderator for this session. As you may know that the world is, again, in a time of immense changing, brought by the fourth 
Industrial Revolution. With appropriate actions and policies, many benefits will help us grow in this new era. I see great opportunities as well as challenges. Together with the expert in fintech industry, we will have Q&A sessions to get more insights about this topic. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce today the invited speakers. The first one, we're going to have Mr. Paul Sulte, founder Sulte Research. And the second one, we're going to have Bapak Danarjaya Harinta Sri, VP Operations and Technology APL and member of Zueling Pharma Group ICIO community. Last but not least, we have Dr. Tafik Arifin, researcher from UNS FinTech Center. And I would like to inform to all the participants that you are allowed to ask to the speakers both by using the raise hand features and we're going to ask the committee later to unmute you and give your questions. Don't forget also that you can use the question chat box. You have a question from the speakers, then you can use the chat box with the format, name, and then your school or institution, and then um, the question to which speakers you are addressing the questions, and then the questions. Okay, and later I will help you to read the question for the speakers. And today's talk show uh, will be carried out under digital innovation technology and financial. In All right, so now I'm going to, okay, greet the speakers first. Hello, I'm gonna start from, doc, uh, from Mr. Sulte. Hello, Mr. Sulte, how is it going? Very good, excellent, thank you. Uh Albert, okay, yes. And here that you're joining from Singapore, is it right, um, Mr. Sulte? Yes, saya sangat senang berada di sini hari ini saya di Jakarta. You speak English, you speak Indonesian very well. Okay, baik, baik, selamat malam, baik. Bahasa Indonesia, Mr. Sulte bagus sekali. Baik, the next one I'm going to greet. Um, the next one is Bapak Danar Jaya. Hello, Bapak Danar Jaya. Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Bapak Danar Jaya. Okay, uh, your voice is uh, clear here. And the next one, Dr. Taufik Arifin. Hello, Dr. Taufik. Hello, it's my pleasure to be here. Okay, yeah. I'm it's, excited it's... to be uh, this part of conversation, yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's very clear, Dr. Taufik, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna give uh, the, the first two questions for Mr. Sulte first, and then I'm going to go to uh, Baba Danar Jaya and later to Dr. Taufik, okay? So Mr. Sulte, the first question is, um, how does FinTech actually contribute to financial inclusion, Mr. Sulte? Well, so, so <clears throat> what we are looking at is, uh, you know, I wrote a book with David um, Lee a couple of years ago, and I, I have a new book. This one is basically looking at the world of uh, prop tech and, and, and how increasingly financial services is moving into every element of our life as we digitize extremely quickly. Uh, and so without uh, access to this digitized world, uh, it's going to be very problematic for people to participate in the financial system. Uh, you know, there's a new phrase that's been uh, coined recently. It's called the paper belt. You know, we have the rust belt in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, right, and uh, Michigan. And now we're going to the paper belt. And for the, for, for the companies who want to stay in the paper, they're going to get left behind. So the, the fintech revolution with insurance and in now into property is the full digitization of physical assets. And, and we have to bring people into this world in order to, uh, by definition, include them uh, as the world increasingly digitizes our body, our movement, physical location, cities, um, and so forth. 
Okay. Uh, still related to the first question, Mr. Solte. So, uh, what do you think of the future for uh, this fintech in relation to the blockchain base of cryptocurrencies, Mr. Solte? <clears throat> yeah. So, a lot of the a lot of what we talk about in this book is with David is is the the evolution of this in Asia is most articulated and best articulated by uh, BSN. So the, the blockchain service network is going to become, I think, something of a default mechanism for a lot of the blockchain-based financial services, because you know if, if they're going to do business with China, you're going to have to go through the BSN. And the BSN is fully automated as a blockchain instrument. Uh, the Federal Reserve is very far behind in this. The Bank of England, the ECB are very far behind, and so China has like a three or four year head start all these guys. And so I think the, the, the BSN is really going to be this for very rapid uh, adaptation of blockchain-based financial services starting about now. Okay, so it's a promising, yeah, really promising. Well, we do hope so. All right, so I'm going to leave Mr. Rasulde for a while and I'm going to go to uh, Dr. Taufik Arifin first. So Dr. Taufik, this question is for you. Uh, as you know that in these recent years, there have been many fintech startups founded. However, it's actually the question is now arising is about the sustainability and what do you think of uh, this phenomenon, Dr. Taufik? Thank you. Um, yeah, as we all know, and also mentioned previously by uh, Mr. Scotty that the fintech is one of the hardest trends in the tech industry today. And it seems as though everywhere you turn, there is a, a new startup trying to get you to open like a digital account or uh, use their app to pay for goods and uh, services. So these companies are uh, riding to wave the digital revolution and uh, seek to revolutionize uh, the way we think about, handle and uh, experience uh, our money. But uh, despite the demand for a uh, disruption in the financial sector, um, finding success uh, in this space is, is challenging. So even if uh, a fintech startup begins with uh, a good chunk of, of funding, uh, the risks are still high. Uh, yeah, according to the, the Wall Street Journal, uh, about 75% uh, of a venture back startup fails. So yeah, uh, it's, it's, with all startups, uh, there are many issues such as uh, funding and competition, uh, customer behavior, expectation, and many more. Uh, shortly, uh, in my opinion, uh, the main reason why a startup fails is uh, they don't understand the user's uh, psychological behaviors and the market itself. Uh, the fintech companies work under different rules than the classic financial service industry. Uh, the founders sometimes think uh, they have to compete with everyone, like old banks, uh, other challenger banks, uh, for attention and uh, customer volume. So this is true for uh, to some extent, but the most important fact is that fintech is the industry where uh, experience matters. Uh, moreover, uh, the fintech is not only uh, highly regulated, but also very demanding. If uh, you're making a loan app, uh, you have to know everything. Like you have to know about money flows, uh, margins, credit margin assessment, and many more. Uh, another example, uh, if, if uh, you are developing a money transfer app, for example, uh, do you really understand the user behaviors habit or uh, do, uh, uh, user behaviors or, uh, or habit? Uh, another issue, uh, like uh, will application work in Africa or maybe Indonesia with uh, thousands of islands where the internet infrastructure is uh, totally different compared to Europe or the US. So these are some questions that uh, we want to answer before uh, taking any step further. And there are plenty. It's not easy, but the, the opportunities are there. So we take it or leave it. All right, all right, yeah, uh, I love that optimism. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go to uh, Mr. Danar Jaya, Bapak Danar Jaya Haritasri. So 
Um, Mr. Danarjaya, what role does technology play in economic inclusion is actually? Yeah. <clears throat> um, thank you for the question, uh, Albert. Um, I think just to build on what uh, <clears throat> Mr. Schulter and also Dr. Tofik uh, mentioned, fintech is uh, one of the um, uh, trend uh, uh, recently. Uh, so behind that, um, it's a technology investments, um, things like uh, blockchain, even the internet connections like 5G uh, plays an important role. Yeah. So technology in a sense is a bridge between the, um, the last mile uh, customer or consumers and then the, the one that providing services and also the um, production who have the uh, products here. Yeah. So that's um, in a way it's the um, uh, bridge and also the enabler uh, for the economic inclusion. Now I understand the situation in Indonesia is um, <clears throat> it's still in the early stage when it comes to um, advanced technology like blockchains or um, you know like having 5G which is supposed to be launched um, in the next couple of days. Um, so we'll see um, hopefully uh, this can um, progress uh, much faster than we hope uh, so that the economic uh, inclusion can be uh, national rather than you know only a few uh, big cities only. All right, okay, yeah, we do hope that everything's gonna be like fast movement here from this. I'm gonna go be back to Dr. Taufik Arifin, all right, Dr. Taufik, so uh, we're going to talk about the issue of uh, lack of digital financial literacy, which creates inappropriate use of FinTech. So what do you think of uh, that kind of issue, Dr. Taufik? Yeah, uh, that's the very important issue at this moment. Uh, with the increased digitalization of financial services, uh, financial literacy has become an essential skill uh, that is required for everyday life around the world. Uh, if you look at the, the definition of financial literacy as the ability to, to understand and analyze financial options, and then plan for the future and to respond appropriately then uh, financial literate people can make better financial decisions and uh, therefore uh, they are more able to uh, achieve their financial goals and also to hedge themselves against the economic shock and also their associate risks that eventually lead to uh, financial well-being. But uh, as the opposite, the, uh, the lack of financial knowledge is the main driver that pulls people away from uh, financial markets. However, uh, the challenge and risk of uh, digital financial services are exhibited by the fact that uh, the financial consumers may not have the financial and digital skills to use these products and services and uh, to understand the new risks uh, that may be facing. So the emerging innovation and the growing complexity of uh, digital financial services continue to expose consumers to a new <coughs> type of risk. And these risks uh, include like over indebtedness, digitally delivered credit, and then uh, uh, high customer vulnerability, uh, to phishing schemes, uh, social engineering scams, and uh, maybe account hacking, uh, privacy issues such as data and identity theft, like uh, what happened recently about the, uh, the Indonesian citizens' uh, huge database. Uh, so this oh, is an important yeah. issue and so on and so forth. So even though the recent advancement in financial inclusion are underpinned by the rapid rise of digital financial literacy, uh, the usage continues to lag behind as indicated by the lower consumer awareness, uh, understanding and trust in these uh, services. So I think it is necessary to strengthen the digital financial literacy by uh, addressing relevant digital financial literacy needs and also gaps and mitigate uh, related consumer risks as well, uh, as I mentioned before, to, uh, to enhance uh, and to uh, optimally use the quality of the finance, of fintech services. All right, okay. So uh, the next question from uh, this list is goes to Mr. Danarjaya. We're going to talk about actually um, the most promising uh, financial technology that uh, will be in the future. So uh, based on Bapak Danarjaya, so actually what is the most promising financial technology for the future? 
Yeah, um, I think um, with regards to uh, fintech um, technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning plays an important role because they, uh, with that capability, people or the um, uh, service providers of fintech can provide uh, can have the analysis of uh, consumers' behaviors. Yeah, and um, the buying power, the typical um, how they spend their money and everything. So that is possible with the uh, technology. Yeah? But also um, um, things like blockchain is currently, I think it was mentioned earlier that it's, it's like the, it's going to be like the basic uh, requirements in the future because uh, this opens up uh, new opportunities for not just fintech, but other industries like uh, where I'm in uh, at the moment, it's in the um, pharma company. Um, blockchain can be used uh, for, for things like uh, do a track and trace on drugs um, do uh, transactions, which is more reduced in terms of uh, cost, but also time yeah, uh, for fintech. So those are the two things I think um, uh, would be a promising technology of the future. So again, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, blockchain. All right. All right. Thank you, Baba Danarjaya. All right. So dear speakers, uh, that was the question from the list that I've got in my hands. Now we're going to go to the participants. And right now, we're going to go to uh, the participants uh, hitting the raised hand features. We've got Nafisia. Okay, Nafisia. Hello, Nafisia. Hello, Nafisia. Can you hear me? Hello. Oh, okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, definitely right now. Okay, so okay. Nafisha, before uh, you address your question, uh, speakers, I will introduce yourself first. Yes. So, uh, what's your institutions? And then, okay, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nafisha. I'm from management student from uh, Sebastian Smart University. Okay, I would like and to ask the questions. Who are you asking the questions to? To Mr. Schultz. Okay, Schultz, please. Okay. Uh, as the fintech is developing all around the world, some fintech, especially P2Ps, face great obstacles such as stringent regulation, where some countries require P2Ps to have bank licenses. How do you view this? Would this engender uh, trust to the potential customer or instead would hinder uh, the growth of the fintech itself. Thank you. Okay, right. Yes. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. All right, so, yep. Okay, so the question goes to Mr. Sulte, and okay, I'm gonna, Nafisha, you're gonna have the answer directly from Mr. Sulte from now. Please, Mr. Sulte. Yeah, it's a great point. So you have companies like uh, Marketa, which, which is um, uh, having an IPO this week, and, United States. Marketa bought a bank. It's a key bank with like 40 people in Ohio. Now it's a bank, right? It's a licensed bank, right? And uh, SoFi has just bought a, uh, has, has now has a banking license. I think increasingly there is going to be a trend toward banking licensing, even though these exact same institutions two years ago swore that they were great because they were not banks. Right, because they, they were the platform. And, and so I think that I think there's a shift now um, going away from uh, unregulated platforms or regulated uh, financial institutions. And you see that in uh, very sexy platforms like Marketa and SoFi, both of whom are going to have IPOs fairly soon. <clears throat> when I spoke to, I did a briefing with Pat Luha a couple of years ago in Jakarta uh, about this exact issue with OJK and BI. And, you know, uh, a, a lot of the uh, consensus at the time was that if banks have a separate digital entity, that entity would fall under the bank license. So I, I think increasingly, I see a world where increasingly more and more of the world of crypto, P2P, 
uh, SME lending is all going to have to become licensed. That, that's what I see going on. It's okay. A, it's a great question. All right. Yeah. And I believe that Ryan and Afisha has already got the answer from Mr. Solte, one of our experts here. Thank you, Mr. Solte. Now we're going to go to the chat box questions in the Zoom application. And again, this is for Mr. Solte. <laughs> While fintech may operate as a complementary services to banking products, such as lending, what do you think about this? Uh, will this be a future threat? Or rather, could help banking industries with regard to penetration toward unbank or underbank customer? Again, Mr. Solte. Well, so, so I think that there are a lot of banks, like BCA is an example. I, I, I worked with BCA five years ago, and their board of directors was super on the ball about uh, getting into this, UOB. I worked with the board of directors in Singapore. Um, and, and, and then you really have to count on, on one hand the number of banks in the world that are really with the program on FinTech, Goldman Sachs, I think JP Morgan, um, Citibank. Then you're kind of running out. And so a lot of these banks are trading at terrible discounts to their book value because they just haven't gotten the, the mojo to get you know, workable, reliable fintech products. And increasingly, companies like Square and Stripe and Plaid and PayPal are, and Visa, Visa is so on the ball on this, are taking the bank, bank fees, you know, uh, one after the other. And so the banks need to be really on the ball here uh, or they're, or they're going to become like just utilities like delivering the water and electricity, and they're gonna be trading at very deep discounts. I'll give an example. A lot of these FinTech companies are trading at seven times book. The banks are trading at 0. 0.7 times book, right? So, so the, 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 the FinTech companies are getting a valuation in the equity market that is 10X, 10 times greater than many of the banks around the world. That's a lot of firepower. Okay, right. Okay, we've got one more questions. Okay, and this is for Bapa Danar Jaya Harintasri. So, Mr. Danar, I would like to ask <coughs> regarding the costs of financial intermediation while P2PS are bridging and connecting the funder or the investor and borrower directly. So, why in the developing countries we experience higher cost? of borrowing rather than lower one. Okay, so Mr. Danar Jaya, please. Yeah, I have to say, um, I'm not from the uh, finance industry, but uh, what I can say is that the, uh, why the cost is, um, could be higher is because um, still uh, new in terms of uh, technology here. So the, um, it's not getting the economies of scale um, at the moment. So when we have, um, if you compare to mature countries like in the US, for instance, uh, where most of the um, um, individuals are very IT literate and they use technology in, in the, you know, their, their uh, day to day life, uh, the cost of technology becomes uh, lower. Yeah, so I think that could be one of the reasons uh, why the cost is still high because it's still in the, how do you say, it's still in the investment stage rather than already reaping the benefits. All right, okay. All right, thank you to all the speakers for the, I know this is short, but I believe that this will bring benefit for all of the participants. So ladies and gentlemen, please give big round of applause for all the speakers for this talk show. All right, so dear participants, still stay tuned here because after this, we're going to have Kahoot quiz and also we're going to have awarding session, UNS. Digital Innovation Challenges 2021 with my partner, Elizabeth Sudira. I'm giving back the floor to Elizabeth Sudira.
Thank you so much, Albert, you know, and all the speakers about the dynamic talk show. And now we will move forward to the next agenda. And I'm sure everyone has been waiting for this session, refreshment session, because there will be a prize for the winner. Oh, guess what? It's the game session. We will play Kahoot games today. I'm sure some of you have played this game before and I will ask the committee to prepare the platform. So guys, just click on your browser, kahoot.it, kahoot.it, and you have to fill the columns with pin one, two, eight, oh, seven, one, five. Once again, if you want to join this quiz, one, two, eight, oh, seven, one, five. We have two minutes to prepare, so make sure that you fill the columns with the right number, with the right pin. One, two, eight, oh, seven, one, five. Mm, I can't wait to know who is the most lucky participants tonight. Yeah, mm. we're still waiting, we're still waiting. Kahoot.it. Then fill the blanks with the pin one two eight zero oh, seven one five. Wow! I see you guys. Wow! 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 Just coming! Just coming! And we still have lots of participants who really, really want the prize. Come! 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 Come in! You only have a little bit minute. Only one minute again. Okay, one minute to go to know who is the winner. Oh, come on, come on. One, two, eight, oh, seven, one, five. That was the pin. Make sure that your pin is right and correct so you can have a chance to get the prizes tonight okay are you ready guys mm, i saw you wow, wow 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 so many participants is come in okay three two one okay guys please pay attention to your screen and this is the first question. This first startup that reached hectocorn level is. Go, 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 quick, 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 quick. Ooh. You still have five seconds. Go, go, go. Yay! Is there your names there? Mm. Still trying for the second question. This is the second question on the games. Be ready, be ready, be ready. And answer quickly. What city ranks second in the top 100 emerging ecosystem ranking for startup? Come, 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 come. You can choose San Francisco, Beijing, or Jakarta. Wow, Jakarta is the right answer. Okay. Mm. Slow down, slow down, and we're going to the third question. So this is the third question. True or false? USA has the largest number of startups in the world. True or false? Go, go, go! Come! Quick, 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 quick! Oh! 
true, USA have more than 50,000 startup. Okay, so now, ah, we're going to the fourth question. When did Gojek reach unicorn startup level? 2017, 2016, or 2019? I know the answer. Do you know the answer? It's very easy. Wow, 2017. Are you guys answer it correctly? Mm, I hope so. So now we prepared for the fifth question. Easy or no? Okay, let's see. Out of 12 unicorn startups in Southeast Asia in 2020, how many are from Indonesia? Go! Three, four, or five? Ah, uh, let's count. One, two, three, four, or five? Answer quickly, quickly, quickly. Woo! Five! The answer. And congratulations. But still, we want to go to the next question. And this is the top five until now because we still have five questions. Nopal, Jaga Semangatun, El Agung, and etc. But now, be prepared guys. We still have five questions to go. And this is the next question. What unicorn startup established by William Tanwijaya and Leontinus Alpha Edison? Is it Libby, Tokopedia, or Grab? Come, 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 come. Try to answer. Ooh, time is out. Tokopedia, the answer. Okay. Take a deep breath and we go to the seventh question. Grab is the most well-funded company in the fintech 250 list in 2020. True or false? True or false? You only have to choose true or false. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, true. We come to the next question. This is the question. UK is ranked second in the number of fintech companies. Is it true or false? Go, 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 go. UK, UK, you still have five seconds. UK. Yes, true. And for your information, that the first rank is US, and the second rank is UK, the third rank is India. So congratulations to you guys that answered correctly. And now we're going to the next question. Professor Wimbo Santoso is the chairman of the board of commissioners of the Indonesia Financial Services Authority. True or false? Three, two, one. And unfortunately, we only have one question left. Okay, take a deep breath because this is the last question for this Kahoot Games. The question is, what is the biggest fintech company in Europe that promotes buy now, pay letter service? Is it Klarna? Klarn or Kayla? Ooh, I can't wait to know who is the winner. I can really not wait. Okay, the right, uh, the right answer is Klarna. Oh, and 
Congratulations to you guys that have been trying. And now this is the top three rank. Agum on the third rank. L on the second rank. And the first one is Chaka Sumangatu. Congratulations. Congratulations to Chaka Sumangatu. L and also Agum. Congratulations to all Kahoot winners. And to the games winner, please kindly contact the committee by direct message IG at uns.fintechcenter. Now we will move to the long awaited moment, the moment of truth that everyone has been desperately waiting for. Because together we will announce the winner of our previous competition, UNS Digital Innovation Challenges 2021. But before that, big appreciation for the judges that help us to access all the participants' innovation idea. And we were delightfully hope to have another collaboration on the next event. Thank you to Mr. Arung Sultan Pamuka, Investment Associate Alpha Momentum Indonesia. Thank you to Mr. Deo Nathaniel, Head of Product at Unicorn Company. Mr. Putra Pamungkas, Researcher UNS Fintech Center as the judges. And now we're going to the first category is the Creative Video Award. We will have best three teams winning 200 US dollars. And the themes are. Congratulations to Sumar Anata. Sumar Anata has an innovation. GAS Go Away Sampa, Android based application to sell garbage. And we still have two teams on this category. Congratulations to Asa. Asa with the innovation, Dia Lugue, the art of exploring your dreams major. Only one team left after this. Who will be the best three creative video awards? Congratulations to Lucky. Lucky is the third team of this category with Puruna UMKM crowdfunding equity platform as the innovation. Once again, congratulations to the best three credit video awards that win 200 US dollars. Quick Pitch Award is the next category goes to Kalana. Kalana win this category with Kalana Innovation for Improving Financial Literacy Indonesia as the innovation. Congratulations! Kalana win 175 US dollars. Congratulations once again. And now, the next category is Visual Presentation Award goes to Fati Project. Fati Project with the innovation of Fati Al-Quran for Life Sciences as 
the innovation. Congratulations to the team. You win 175 US dollars. And now, the next category is the winner of People's Choice Award. Congratulations, Brawi Jaya Squad! Brawi Jaya Squad will People Choice Award with Take Care as the Innovation. You win 175 US dollar as the People Choice Award winner. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate with a performance by Ola Rosa. Congratulations to the team who won the Credit Video Award. Quick Pitch Award, Visual Presentation Award, and People Choice Award. And we are waiting for the announcement of the runner-ups and the winner of UNS Digital Innovation Challenge 2021.
And the time is come. Let's move to the main winner of the competition. And before that, I want to ask you, the participants that participate this challenge, to show your face at the camera so we can see your face, the winner face, the champion face, and we will show your face through our screen. Once again, please do turn on your camera. Please do turn on your camera to all participants who are joining this challenge. And we will announce who is the main winner that have shown their best presentation and also performance on the 22nd May 2021. Okay, we're still waiting. Please to show your face. So please turn on your camera. Turn on your camera. Yeah. And now we start with the fourth runner-up announcement. Hmm. I am really excited. So ladies and gentlemen, the fourth runner-up, the UNS Digital Innovation Challenge 2021 goes to Helpers. Helpers with the innovation help me congratulations to the team helpers you win 300 us dollars and now we're gonna know who is Runner-up of the Wednes Digital Hero Fashion Challenges 2021. Congratulations to Chua. Congratulations with the innovation, safe drive, revolutioning the laundry industry. How happy you are, guys, as the third runner-up, and you win 475 US dollars. And our for the top three winners, this is the second runner-up of the UNS Digital Innovation Challenges. 2021 is the Chingles. The Chingles with the innovation. Share trail, food donation apps. Wow, I see you guys clapping your hands and appreciate your hard work. Congratulations for winning 700 US dollars. Congratulations, Chicos. This is the runner-up UNS Digital Innovation Challenge 2021. Congratulations, Asa! Like your name, Asa, is a hope. Wow! What an innovation! Dia Lokue. They are not exploring your dreams, Major. Wow! ISR theory now. Because the hard work paid off. Congratulations, you win 1,000 US dollars. Okay, 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 be calm. And this is the winner. Who had this digital little fashion challenge to summon a 21 Glenna? Stephanie Day Magazine, Kevin Dennis, Tito Sinegan. Sylvia, Sylvia, Pisa, congratulations! Your innovation, Kelana, innovation for improving financial literacy in Indonesia, bring you as the winner of UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. You win 1,000.
1,400 US dollars. Congratulations once again. To all speakers and participants, and also the Digital Innovation Challenge winner, we finally came to the end of this event. And once again, congratulations to all the winner. Then, I am Elizabeth Sudira, representing the entire committee. Would like to send our gratitude to all speakers who have been willing to attend this festival. And thanks to all participants who joined us in the Zoom Cloud meetings and the UNS FinTech Center and Universitas 11 Maret official YouTube channel for the attention that has been given to us from beginning until the end of UNS Digital Innovation Festival 2021. And thank you. Also, see you in the next event. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ola Rosa. Bye. Congratulations to all winners and thank you to the participants of UNS Digital Innovation Challenge 2021, the judges and the comedy. I can't stay awake just to hear you breathing Watch you smile while you are sleeping While you're far away and remain I could spend my life in this sweet surrender I could stay lost to this moment Forever and every moment spent with you is a moment I treasure. I don't want to close my eyes, don't want to fall asleep because I'm missing and I don't want to miss a thing because it was a dream of you. And I don't want to miss a thing mm -hmm. Lying close to you Feeling your heart beating And I'm wondering what you're dreaming Wondering if it's me you're seeing And then I kiss your eyes And thank God we are Together, I just want to stay with you in this moment forever, forever and ever. I don't want to close my eyes, I don't want to fall asleep as I miss you, babe. and I don't want to miss a thing. Cause even when I dream of you, the sweetest thing. And I don't want to miss a thing Don't want to miss one smile I don't want to miss one kiss I just want to be with you Right here with you Just like this I just want to hold you close Feel your heart so close to mine And just stay here in this moment for all the rest of time Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going with my eyes Don't want to fall asleep Cause I'm a shit And I don't want to miss a thing Cause even when I dream of you The sweetest thing would never do I say you should be and I don't want to miss a thing I don't want to close my eyes I don't want to fall asleep Cause I miss you, babe And I don't want to miss a thing Cause even when I treat you Treat the dream I never do I still miss you, babe And I don't want to miss a thing
Yeah, why I ask you that?